evening everyone to round 10 of the 1974 USAC championship coming to you tonight from the Wisconsin State Fair Park in Wisconsin obviously with a one mile more or less feels like a bit of a short track this one which uh, will bode for some very tight very neat action with probably a few boost over optimistic drives so to speak with a bit of wheel spin on the exits and a lot of tire wear from what I've heard from the drivers partaking in this event but uh, anyway here we are and this is the Wisconsin State Fair Park track the one 0 0.0 mile oval and we'll be racing for 200 laps equaling 200 miles 200 grueling difficult miles for all our drivers due to the tight nature of this track and having a quick look at the uh, points situation, especially who will get the amount of points in this race, being it a 200 mile one. The winner will take away 400 points, with second taking away 320, third 280, fourth 240, fifth 200. 6th 160 and then from 7th on down to 12th there's a 20 point drop per position starting at 120 for 7th and 12th place driver picking up 20 points. And having looked at the points let's have a quick look at the standings where David Yakes thanks to a few very good races as of late leads the championship on 2650 points 650 points clear of second placed Cesarius Schlapinski on 2000 points Thierry Canola who's unfortunately not racing tonight is lying in third on 1960 points and Jacob Ferguson lines up fourth in the standings on 1,935 points. So as you can see a very tight situation for the top four with quite a few points still to race with in the remaining effectively four rounds, ten, round 10 to 13. With David Junt a somewhat distant fifth on 1,545 points. Still in with a very very slim chance, but who has who who hasn't had a slim chance and still taken the championship in the end? Uh, and for this round ten, we have one uh, piece of news that we want to bring to you all and that is that Bruno Pagiola joins Alucuasto's team uh, which I believe is the McLaren vacated by Dave Miller so a pretty handy piece of kit and uh, will be interesting to see what Bruno can do with it to bring you up to speed on what the track looks like itself. Let me just get situated here, remove slightly downsize the window and so on. Currently Cesar Schlapinski is actually quickest here in the practice session ahead of the qualifying run as someone has just crashed coming off of turn four there. Oh Cesar has a bit of a spin as well taking to the apron on the bottom of the track. Let's see if we can find someone on about to start a 
left here. It's actually you run on board here with uh, Brian Yannick and allow him to show us the way around the track. So here we go across the start finish line into turn one and two. Difficult to get the car down to the bottom of the racetrack here and trying to get a run off the corner. A little bit loose on the exit there for Brian, but it looked like he did a decent job at it. And very nicely down in hey, 34 to stay down towards the bottom of the track. So hey, wake up. I'll be right back. My sincerest, sincerest apologies for the slight uh, hiccup here. Uh, that was the first time I actually rode on board with a car and uh, I didn't notice that the textures were a little bit too low. Uh, one of the beauties of uh, sim racing broadcasts I suppose that such hiccups can occur at occasion. Uh, Anyway, we are back, back live. David Yates in fifth at the moment, but currently fastest in this practice session is actually Brian Yannick. Will Slapinski currently second, and as Nilsson third, David Jund fourth, David Yates fifth. Pridol 6th, Ferguson 7th, Seb 8th, uh, Alberto Quino 9th, and Alberto Senior, Ibanez that is, rounding out the top 10 as we have what looks like 19 drivers getting ready to partake in this particular race. A 
Secondly, we may have one or two more showing up for this one. But we'll have to see as we are just awaiting the qualifying session to get underway. As it looks like it's happening now. Let's try to find someone who's going out on track here, so... Uh, Mikael Drexler, who is standing in for the Pat Patrick Racing Team, is uh, with us once again. It's been a while since we saw uh, Mikael drive last time. I think that would be for the... Um, the Norris Ring... 200, I think? the event was called, Norris Ring 200, 250, uh, where he was dicing for the win in the GT class of that particular race. Let's just give you a quick chance to have a look at what his car looks like, so you know if you're a fan of Mikael who you're supposed to look out for, as he's also going out on track. Perfect timing. Let's see if we have anyone else actually out on track setting lap times at the moment. It looks like David Yun might be the one furthest out on track at the moment, so... Let's follow him. For now. We can hear that quite low revs actually coming off the corner. Went a little bit wide that time, but uh, possibly looking for a good exit onto his second qualifying lap of two opportunities. So maximum of two laps, 28-2. That's actually quite rapid, I think. Uh, maybe not. The Sanders Nilsson blasts in a 27-8 or very, very, uh, very low 27-9. Still a little bit high for David here, but looked a little bit better, so may just about be able to sneak underneath Anders time. No, he could not. And see Anders actually finished his run, so let's see Schlapinski to finish one more lap by the looks of things. And actually a little bit up at the moment. So let's see what he can do as he enters turn three. Oh, very wide. Very, very wide, so I think that is not going to be a faster time as he has a spin coming off of turn 4. Actually spins into the pit lane, rather fittingly, I suppose. Raul Yereb is back as well, driving for... Uh, I believe that's Robert L. Fletcher's... one of Robert L. Fletcher's cars. I could be wrong, but I believe that is the case. Alberto Queen, I think, has one more lap to finish here for uh, the Roger Penske crew, as he's up almost two tenths, coming through sector one. I see, I see two tenths up, and that looks like a very good line coming through three and four. So actually up to seventh, so a very nice improvement there for Alberto Junior. Ray Ridol heading into turn one there. Half a second down on his first lap, a ten, a ten, one point, point one six up now, so quite a big improvement. Let's see what three and four holds for Ray. A bit of understeer, but two tenths up, just behind Anders Nilsson at the moment. But it looks like Anders had a very good exit coming off of four. So, see what happens. Actually, Ray up to third, so very, very rapid indeed. As Brian Yannick just about beats him by two thousandths of a second. And as someone else joins the survey just now, let's see if anyone else is out. Looks like Mikael Drexler is done with his qualifying. Porfirio Santos currently out, but it looks like that's User not going to channel. be another improvement. As 
it looks like. Oh, and it's actually being beat by Brian Yannick in the dying second. So almost a tenth improvement there for Brian up into the pole position placing at the moment for Robert L. Fletcher. He'll be very happy with that. As I also heard, we are joined by someone. Let's see if I can get team speak up. So we are joined by Jason White. Good evening, Jason. Jonathan, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm really looking forward to this one. Should be a lot of fun to commentate over. How about you? I'm doing okay. Uh, I've been having audio issues lately, so this is an auxiliary mic. So if it sounds a bit strange, I apologize. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to just survive today. I had a very late night last night with uh, some good friends, so I'm going to uh, do my very best to uh, <laughs> uh, just, fo just focus and make it to the end. But uh, I'm going to keep this mic open. Uh, so if you want to talk to me during the yellow flag periods, you're more than welcome to. I'll just make a separate channel. Thank and you then you can much. and you can drag me in and out of there, okay? Uh, I don't think I have the power to drag, but I'll join you in the channel if. if we have okay, a yeah. And long set of in yellows. Th in that case, you can jump to the channel and then jump back to the broadcast booth. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. As qualifying is just up, and Brian Yannick takes pole position here tonight. The Detroitian Devil doing it once again yep. for Robert L. Fletcher. Not surprised. Uh, he's. Uh, it's amazing how he's able to. Like he, he kind of slow rolls you. He he shows up in in the uh, early part of the week, you know, putting in some laps. Then next thing you know, he's on the very top of the chart. So <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate that you know he's he's a bit down in the point standings. He can't really challenge for the title. But uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, providing he keeps his boost in check, he's probably going to be a good uh, candidate for the win today. The ones to watch today are obviously uh, Cesarius and uh, David. Uh, Jake's because they're leading the championship. This is uh, this is going to be a key uh, moment for Schlepinski to close on uh, David if David has any issues today. That's certainly true, and we also ought to look out for. Um, oh, completely eludes me. Jacob Ferguson, who's fourth in the standings, and oh, me and names. Ay ay ay. Um, give me a second here and we'll bring up the standings once again just to remind myself and the viewers uh, well Jacob Ferguson Tiago Canolo unfortunately isn't here I don't know if you've heard anything about who, specif who specifically Tiago Canola. oh Tiago couldn't make it so unfortunately he's going to be losing his car after this race because it's two absences in a row oh, that's very unfortunate indeed and he was well yeah. placed in the championship. Just yeah, it, in third. yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, it effectively means that uh, uh, Jake's has less uh, competition. Quite, but uh, I would say the AJ Foyt Coyote in the hands of Schlapinski and Ferguson mm -hmm. in that uh, in that machine of his is. Quite the opposition either way, but as indeed. oh, I just I something just occurred to me, Jonathan. Since I'm here, I could verbally describe the keys to the race. Of course, and I'll bring that up in the graphics. So here we are. Okay, Jason's cool. keys to the race. Go ahead. All right. So this may seem a bit obvious, but one of the keys to the race is don't pit under green, uh, because this is such a short course, as uh, Jonathan has pointed out. It's uh, if you pit under green, not only are you basically throwing away your chances to uh, win the race, but you are probably going to go a lap or maybe even two laps down if you pit under green. So whatever you do, avoid uh, that, which is probably why we're going to see a lot of people pitting under yellow, like like all the cars streaming in <laughs> at certain p points. Indeed, and something else to keep in mind in that regard, even if there's a yellow, if you're towards the back of the field, you actually need to wait a lap to head into the pits because uh, I think it was you who had that issue. He was towards the back of the field, pitted the first lap on the yellow and ended up a lap down because the leader yeah, the pit. Yeah, that, I think that's a miscalculation a lot of people made too, even at uh, Pocono, and, and it ended up putting a bunch of people a lap down. So you got to be careful about that. Um, also, uh, when you're going into the turns, one thing that's helpful to keep the speed going in the car and to get the acceleration out of the turn is you got to work the throttle at the same time you're working the brake. It's kind of, uh, 
kind of counterintuitive for some people, but uh, what you're doing is you're keeping the uh, turbo spooled up so that you don't lose uh, uh, horsepower on the exit. That's really what you're doing. You're just trying to keep it rolling so that when you do get back in the throttle, you've got the best exit speed possible. Indeed. And, uh, I suppose you could call that having ballet shoes on, trying to they, balance it the feels that It feels that way, yeah. And uh, the last item there, stockpile engine life for the closing laps. Um, we're not going to be able to run full boost the whole race. It'll still, like, I tried running full boost for about 20 laps in practice, and the engine blew up. So that's not an option. But uh, for assuming that you uh, baby the car before the end of the race, you may be able to uh, turn the boost up to full and go for it at the end. So, so those are my keys to the race. For the guy who's starting 12th in the race, yeah. Like, I know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> well, something else I found out in terms of entering the, the, the turns, as it were. Um, from what I've understood, you need to... Ins you, sh you should probably avoid doing the quick lift, as it were. You should be a bit more careful, because the, bo the turbo might overrun and keep pushing the car straight if... If if uh, if you lift too quick, so you'll have the sort of shattering in the turbo, actually yeah, forcing it, the car wide. Well, if you if you lift off the uh, turbocharger uh, going into the turn, if you lift off completely, all the pressure goes out the window, and you can hear it going. <laughs> so you just you just basically taking all the boost pressure out of the occasion, uh, occasion out, out of the. Uh, situation and and uh you have to build all that back up again so if you can just like pump the throttle as you're going in but it'll be hard to do that and and also react to the traffic in front of you so you know it's a lot it's it's a, it's going to be busy uh, for everybody around here it looks simple from the outside but trust me it's not i suppose it could be likened to the trenton track where there's a lot of bit, lot of, lot of stuff going on all the time because, obviously, the lap is so short and the corners are so tight that the slightest bit of hiccup and all hell can break loose. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. All right, I'm going to get myself situated for the race, but I, I wanted to be on here, like, so you can talk to me at, on yellows because I know that uh, Miller is not uh, present anymore. So I just didn't want you to be stuck with nobody to help you. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll certainly keep that in mind. Best of luck for, for the race tonight. And look yep. forward to ha see you hopefully have a good event. Hopefully the VPJ boys will do well. Uh, all right, I'll talk to you later. Yep, take care. User was moved out of your channel. So that's Jason White's keys to the race given to you by Mr. White himself. Uh, and excuse me as I'm just having a quick look to see whether Peter was able to join. Looks like he is in now, so good to see. I noticed Peter was having some driver driver's issues, graphics drivers uh, specifically, but looks like that's sorted. So good to see Peter back in here racing once again. Um, Let's actually have a look through the field, see if we have anyone else that's who hasn't driven for a while, or... Uh, here we have Eric Plan, I usually don't get a lot of screen time, but uh, plugging away and doing a very good job, uh, trying to stay on the track and running towards to the end of the race, because with the attrition in this series, anything can happen if you make it to the end of the race, so good to see Eric back once again uh, Bruno Pagiola in the Martin Guitar sponsored number 86 the McLaren uh, Bruno Chacon back in his Riley for this one hopefully he'll have a good event uh, and Jon Tim is actually in here driving tonight for the sure 
the sure fine foods i think that says sponsored number 63 also a McLaren, I believe. So it will be interesting to see what Jon can do. Another Swede trying his his hands at this oval business. I know for, for a fact that I can't do it, but uh, we'll see what happens for him. Number 45, back racing again, as I mentioned, is Peter. Uh, Mikkel Drexler in the number 60 Pat Patrick racing team car. And Porfirio Santos driving the number 89 for this event. I believe that is uh, a RAS car, but don't quote me on that. Obviously, my knowledge of these cars are not quite as good as they should be. And Porfirio Santos in the Volstead, uh, the car that I tried to qualify for Coxon at Indianapolis. And actually managed to get into the field, but unfortunately uh, Coxon was not able to drive in the race. Uh, very quickly for you all, in terms of also what uh, Jason said about stockpiling the engine life, uh, it's, all, it's all down to the RPM and temp combined, because uh, as we noticed at Pocono as well, the temperature for many of the drivers that did did end up with a uh, engine issue were more or less fine. It was the revs towards the end of the front straight that caught many drivers out at Pocono. Uh, and it seems to be the, a very similar situation here, where as long as you keep the RPMs in a uh, survivable range for your engine, then you're good to go. But obviously the higher your temperature, your average temperature is, the lower that safe RPM is likely to be, so it's something you have to keep in mind. And also for this race, uh, most likely, if it's green all the way, will be two stops for fuel. You'll need to make it to lap 67 to be able to, be able to make it on two stops as far as I'm aware uh, but due to the nature of the track uh, most of it will be tire dependent and not fuel dependent whether you can make it to that lap 67 or not so don't be surprised if we see someone going a little bit slowly in the early parts of the race trying to save a little bit of tire towards uh, being able to make it on two stops in the race as the warm-up time has just run out so we're just waiting for the officials to take us into the race session and also good evening everyone watching uh, not sure who Eric is but uh, I'm Jonathan Åkerklint, if anyone is new to our broadcasts, usually it's me or Jason White behind the mic for this for these events. Uh, also, good evening, uh, I believe that is Dave, Mr. Squidly. Uh, and good evening, Barry Lynn, nice to see you here. I hope, uh, I hope Aniel May is somewhere around as well watching this, maybe alongside Dave, since Dave w isn't racing tonight. As we are in the race session, so let's see if... Uh, let's quickly go through the grid as it is. Brian Yannick starts on pole with Anders Nilsson second. David Yakes is third with Ray Ridol fourth. David Junt is 5th with Jacob Ferguson 6th, 7th for David Sabre and 8th for Alberto Ibanez, 9th for Alberto Equino, that is Alberto Junior, as there's a bit of a slow getaway on the grid here, but it looks like everyone is getting away. Cesar Schlapinski starts 10th, uh, 11th for Jon Team, a good qualifying for him and 
what I believe is his first oval race in quite a while. Uh, Raul Yareb starts 12th with Jason White 13th, Juha Bors 14th, Bruno Pagiola 15th with Drexler 16th, 17th for Jules Bouchard and 18th for Porfirio Santos and Eric Plana starts 19th with Peter Lavac unfortunately late to qualifying start, rounds out the grid in 20th and uh, no actually Bruno Chacon in 21st as well so my apologies Bruno. So though that is our 21 car field and now we now have sounds from the track. So let's see, safety car heading in, so just a few moments away from the start of the race. Here we are, green flag is out and race is underway and it looks like Brian Yannick will take the lead going into turn one. It looks like everyone is making it through turn one okay. So you can see down in three and four, the field still trying to work themselves, work out where each one is going to be. As the field streams past, and I'll be right back. Unfortunately, everything going wrong for me, but here we are. So it looks like Yannick is in the lead, Nielsen second, Yakes third, Jund fourth, Fregson fifth, uh, Bridol sixth, and a bit further back it looks like there's a bit of a battle pack. With Eric Plan actually up into 17th at the moment. Very good start for him. Always he scrapes the wall a little bit, but it's Lavac up ahead of him, so Lavac has had a good start as well. Jason White, Jon Team, and Jules Bouchard actually also with a very good start. As Brian Yannick sets the fastest lap of the race so far at the 28, rounded up to 28.3. Oh, as Plana enters turn one a little bit too hot there. As it looks like Jules Bouchard is suffering from a little bit of understeer, but uh, came up a decent pace. As Anders Nilsson sets a 28 1 at the front of the field in second at the moment. So leading two with a bit of a gap to Yakes in third, Junt fourth, Ferguson in fifth, Ray Vidal in sixth, Alberto Ibanez in seventh, and being under attack from Schlapinski in eighth. Saber in ninth and Juha Bors currently sitting in tenth. And just behind him is Raul Yareb who usually has good oval races, currently in twelfth. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do in this particular one. He's a one off driver as well. But uh, obviously with some very good races earlier on in these kind of championships as Ferguson is a little bit loose coming up for four and the battle pack here is definitely on it as it were and here we are looking back from, back from Alberto Ivanez's car when Slapinski sneaks up inside Ray Vidal just about Maybe a little bit of scraping tire to tire, but it looks like they all survived. Saber now looking up the inside as well. And Schlapinski with a bit of oversteer on the entry into one there. And I think Alberto took to the apron. That's very dangerous indeed as he gets loose on the exit. Now I believe that is Ray Riddle trying to fight back against David Saber. Maybe just about able to sneak up the inside towards the exit there. Slapinski now gets a little bit loose. We can see here why the tyres take such a beating around this track. Oh, as now Equino went up the inside of Lavac. Lavac not taking any quarter there. 
was Ibanez now slightly scrapes the outside wall. Oh, and now very, very tall, very, very loose indeed. So it looks like the exit of four is where the trouble is. As here comes Jan team leading the rest of the pack with Jareb right behind him. Then we have Bufelio Santos a little bit behind the rest of the pack with Brian Yannick not far behind him. So 10, ten make that 11 laps in and passes is happening. Or well, lapping is just about to happen. So Ibanez now sneaks up the inside of Jacob Ferguson. So Ibanez up into fifth. Very nicely done there. But knowing Ferguson, he might just be holding back a little bit, saving some tires as it looks like someone has had a spin. in the, at the exit of turn two. Can't see if then can't note well Lavac has dropped back a little bit I think so maybe Lavac had a bit of a moment there. I, sh I think that would be the only obvious uh, position drop that I can see from what we had during the opening four or five laps. So Lavac unfortunately in a little bit of, ish, uh, of trouble and Chacon and uh, Jason White running together once again. Oh, it's the, oh no, that's Juha Bos! It's Juha Bos just, just now with an issue. I'm sorry. Uh, I knew I forgot something. I forgot to replace once again. I'm s I sincerely apologize as Juha Bors heads into the pits for repairs. So he is hoping to be able to continue from there. Drexler currently 19th with Plana 18th. Jules Bouchard now down into 17th. As Alberto Aquino sets the fastest lap at, as a, at a 28 1. Very impressive pace there. Where well, someone almost hit the, the pit barrier, I believe. Pagiola 16th, White currently 15th, Villavas now 14th with Jerebi 13th, so, so Bruno Chacon is on the move at the moment in 12th, sitting right in behind Jon team. It looks like Chacon might have a very good exit here. He certainly has, and looking up the inside, going into one, will he be able, able to hold the, the inside line? Looks like he will be able to, and up into 11th he goes, so a very good opening. 15 laps for Chacon here. And the rare all now. Oh, it's Eric Plana, I think that was. Unfortunately, Eric Plana looks to be out of the race. That No, that was Bruno Pagiola. My, sense, my apologies, Eric. I misidentified the car. So Pagiola spinning out. Looked like the engine was smoking, so possibly a blown engine. Very unfortunate indeed, but uh, that's our first retiree then, the Brazilian Bruno, Bruno Pagiola. That's that Santos in the Volstead in behind Ray Ridol. And Alberto Quina now challenging Ferguson for seventh. Ooh, and actually almost contact there as Equino looks up the inside. Bit of understeer though. It looks like he should have the position taken as they had to turn one. He does indeed, so Equino up into seventh. Very nicely done. Slapinski currently in sixth, Ibanez fifth, Jun still in fourth, with Jake still in third. But quite a, quite a ways behind Nelson and Yannick. So Yannick definitely putting the hammer down at the moment, wanting to score a win here. Yakes obviously uh, would most likely just want to extend his championship lead. And as long as he finishes ahead of Junt and Schlapinski and Ferguson, that's exactly what he's doing. So, so far, uh, 20 laps in at the end of this lap. Mission accomplished, but obviously 180 laps still to go, so anything can still happen.
Looks like Mikael Drexler is now being lapped and looked like he had a bad exit, so possibly having to jump out of the way of the faster cars as Equino now gets a bit of dirty air there. That's presumably going to get a good exit and slingshot past as he does that, he does that indeed. And you have balls now up into 20th and Pajol unfortunately for Allo Quasto, no first retirement. Let's actually jump on board with the, what I think call, they call... Oh no, Jacob Fregson, there's no engine sound! Oh no, Fregson has blown his engine! Oh dearie me! Talk about rotten timing from my end, wanting to ride on board with him and that's the retirement for Jacob. Well, I suppose the one thing is that that was not a commentator's curse at least. I didn't mention his name before the engine blew but uh, unfortunately that's the end of his race. 21 laps in so presumably running the boost quite high there and unfortunately the engine wouldn't take it as we May as well yell on board with Jason White instead then. My fellow commentator, play-by-play uh, -play commentator here at the International Sim Racing Organization. As Lavac and himself will be trying to make their way around Profeo Santos in the Volstead. And there goes Brian Yannick lapping both of them in very quick succession. Here goes Jason White trying to dive up the inside of Santos and maybe making use of the fact that Lavage is being lapped up ahead. This is how this race is. One car being lapped and then the leader coming up behind you and you need to facilitate two different uh, passes or lappings as it were. So I believe we have another car that would be Nilsson there streaking up the inside. Oh Nilsson onto the apron very nearly losing it. Nicely held though. For fourth could be on here because Ibanez is right up. Or actually, battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth because Schlapinski is also right up behind there. And Equino not far behind either, so father and son creating a Polish sandwich here with Junta Swiss up ahead trying to pull away from the trio behind him and lapped cars up ahead of, of all of them. Looks like Ray Ridol is some, in some kind of difficulty as he is dropping down the field Oh, Ray getting swamped. Ibanez on the outside, Gunt on the inside. Oh, and almost tight to tight contact in the middle of the turn. Let's quickly try and get up there. There we are. Gunt still holding on to fourth, but that was very close indeed. When well, someone has had a bit of a spin towards the inside there, possibly Santos, or maybe that was Ray Ridol actually, since he dropped down to 15. And Schlapinski loose coming off of four. Queen was trying to challenge him as Ibanez now goes up the inside of Junt. Looks like Bell Spinelli Boy's driver is up into fourth. No, actually, Junt getting back on back onto him on the exit. Ibanez still having the inside line though. Let's see how he gets off turn four a bit genially. So still side by side, but uh, looks like. It should be decided as long as Ibanez can hold the bottom line here. Coming through one and two. 
And actually, blue flag is the... Oh, a Slapinski slams the outside wall there. I assume you missed a uh, timing screen in there, but uh, he's back into fifth now. He will drop down to eighth for a moment. But we can see he had a trouble because Ravid all aimed too, too much slower than the cars he's r running with at the moment. So, very unfortunate for Ray and also for those try having to try and lap him. As I believe Schlapinski should now be able to make it happen and Aquino may just about be able to sneak past as well. Actually not, so Aquino will have to do it at the end of this straight. If he wants to keep up with the rest of the guys around him as he dives up the inside. Looks like that lapping is said and done. So Yannick now with a one and a half second lead ahead of Anders Nilsson in second with 33 laps in the books. Yakes in third, Ibanez as we mentioned fourth, Jund fifth, Slapinski sixth and Equino seventh. Just about ahead of Vitol and Bouchard and those two actually fighting for position. Looks like it's fairly tight between them, but I think Ray should have the position sealed there as long as he gets off to the turn four. Okay, looks like he has done so. Well, it looks like Equino is entering the turns a little bit too hot, maybe with a slight flat spot on the left front here, because I've noticed him locking up quite a few times going into these turns. Actually, doesn't do it that time, so. Possibly just trying a little bit too hard. Yeleb currently sitting inside the top 10 for being his first race in quite in a few events. This is a very good comeback from him. And still in with a good shot of getting even further up. And the same can be said for Jon Team, sitting in 11th at the moment. And is the same in 12th, so all three of those doing a very good job so far. With the Jason White now set to be lapped by Alberto Ibanez. And Jason and Ray Ridol not too far behind. They're only three odd seconds behind Jason at the moment. Looks like Plana and Drexler could be in a battle soon as Yareb had a bit of a moment coming off a four there, but. Uh, Looks like they were able to work it out. So let's take the opportunity to ride on board with who seems to be the master of this track at the moment, Brian Yannick, as he heads on to lap 38 of this race. So you could hear, hear last lap. Ryan is using every single part of this track. Very impressive to watch. And Anders Nilsson actually honestly keeping him very honest indeed. I think I thought he was further behind than he is, but uh, 
that's not the case. He's still sticking with Brian, so very impressive to watch. But that's fourth place, Alberto Ibanez. A full five, six seconds behind Yates in third. So top three in a bit of a class of their own at the moment. Like David Jung's car is having a little bit of issues with the transponder in that one. That's the second time I've noticed him being down positions when we have him in our sights. And he's driving for Unlimited Racing Team this evening, the number nine machine. So fourth, fifth and sixth still fairly close together. Seventh as well with Alberto Junior. Has a lot of cars to try and lap. Drexler looking to stay on the inside, let cars by on the outside there, but that's a bit unfortunate for Alberto. He couldn't get him before turn one and two, so he had to wait and that drops him a little ways behind the cars he is battling with. As his pit crew is wanting to call him in already. I think that's a little bit too early. Oh, actually not. It's Alberto Equino already into the pits and someone else is into the pits. I believe that was Santos possibly. Looked like a blue and yellow car, but uh, Alberto Equino into the pits. So that, that seems quite early, lap 44 already. So maybe he's starting on lower fuel to try and take advantage of that kind of opportunity, but... Uh, Either way. Oh no, there's contact there! Eric Plana into the wall on the outside! Dear me, that's a lapping gone wrong, obviously. Let's see what happens here. If we try to find Eric Plana. Eric Plana is already out! Oh dear me, that's very unfortunate. He was having a very good race up until that point. Ah. Uh, very sorry to see, it, see that, Eric, but. Uh, I hope you'll be back next time and hopefully with a better event that next time around with a finish and hopefully in the points. As that means Santos is up into 16th, 17th, Drexel up into 16th. Uh, I believe that also brings Jules Bouchard up into 17th, uh, 15th, my, apo my apologies. Jason White currently 14th, the Queen of 13th after his pit stop with Alberto senior right in front of him so both of them pitted at the same time so that's very imp in interesting father and son having some kind of strategy going here well it's very dangerous to pit on the green as Jason mentioned earlier so we'll see whether this pays off or not that could have been very bad for them the fact that Plana retired uh, just after they pitted but uh, we'll see what happens Ray Ridol Currently in 11th with Lavach 10th, team in 9th now with uh, father and son dropping behind them. Well, this will also be interesting to see how these tires actually help them with the old versus new tire uh, situation. C certainly looks like uh, Alberto Junior is a little bit quicker on new tires than uh, Senior is. As they already caught up to Ray Ridol in front of them. But he in turn has caught up to Lavach and uh, as <laughs> Alberto Junior sneaks up the inside of his father. And it looks like he might take position away. No, actually, the slipstream Ibanez got down the back straight certainly helped him stay ahead. But both of them boxed in behind Ray Ridol at the moment. But here goes, ooh, that was close. Dear me. Alberto wanting to look up the inside, but Ray would have nothing to do with that. As now goes Ibanez up the inside again, but Ray really holding steadfast here, not wanting to let them by. As 
Ooh, Rave getting loose off of turn four. Let's we'll see if he can now might lose the position to Alberto Senior going around outside. Looks like he will, and now it's Equino's time to try and make his way past. And Tim only a little bit up in front of them, so big gaggle of cars right here. being way more courteous than Rividol was just a few laps ago. Lavash letting Ibanez past as soon as Ibanez showed his wing on the inside. See if he'll do the same for Equino. Looks like he will as here goes Ibanez up the inside of Jon team. And Ibanez actually running too wide there. Lavac back up the inside. Very nicely done, but Equino uh, back up the inside. Going into three and four. We can clearly see that the new tyres is certainly beneficial. While they are quicker on outright pace I believe than the cars they are around at the moment. But we can see that the new tyres really helped the Equino get down to the inside there and just easily sling past Jon slingshot past Jon team. Brunisha caught up into seventh at the moment, so that's very impressive to see. Once again showing some good promise early on in the race. Hopefully nothing will befall him this time around as Yannick has pitted down into down to 6th position right now, Sabre in 5th at the moment, Schlapinski loose heading into what I believe is 3 and 4. Junt in 3rd, Jake Segn and Anders Nilsson currently in 1st. Yannick up into 5th, very quickly dispensing of David Sabre there. And so based on that, it takes about 33 to 34 seconds to traverse the pit lane, uh, be it combined in-lap, pit and out-lap. Seeing as he is just ahead of Anders Nilsson, who he was just ahead when he pitted. Just as we cut to it, Schlapinski really sends it up the inside of David Junt. Very nearly ended in tears for both of them, but Schlapinski up into third at the moment. While really getting the slipstream down the back straight there, that Coyote really streamlined very, very quick in the slipstream by the looks of things. Was well, so I believe that was someone stopping in the pits. None of the leaders, so let's look further down the grid. Uh, Jules Bouchard just coming out of the pit lane. So it will have been Jules Bouchard actually getting out of, uh, out of his pit stall as Jason White heads into the pit lane. Jon Team and Lavac still running nose to tail here. As Lavash now will be looking to try and take advantage of Tim being lapped by Anders Nilsson and Lavash sneaks up the inside. Let's we'll see if he'll he'll be able to stay stay there. It looks like he will. It takes eleventh away from Jon Team. Very nicely op nice opportunistic driving there from him. As that's Schlapinski presumably coming out of the pit lane on somewhat cold tires. Or heading into pit lane. Oh is he out of fuel? Surely not. He 
if it wasn't, that was very strange, but a very slow in lap for Schlapinski there. But Nilsson still staying out, he needs to complete another five laps to be able to make it on two stops in this race, so that is presumably what he is looking to do. So let's see what strategy will actually work better as Schlapinski now heading out of the pit lane in 11th. So clearly that dropped quite a bit of time for him because he was running with Equino and Nibanyev before they pitted and he is uh, 14, 15 seconds behind father, the father and son duo. So that inlap was certainly way too slow to be down to strategy alone, he must have been out of fuel. It's very unfortunate for the pole, but uh, hopefully he has some good pace and be able to br uh, head back up the field. So this will be interesting. We're still on the green flag. Two laps left for Anders Nilsson before he can make it on two stops. Make that three laps since he's finished 64. I, I'm still trying to learn how uh, how Automobilista counts the laps. Uh, as he goes around Raoul Ireb heading into the pit lane. Even more so, it looks like he has slightly increased lead over David Yates as well as Nielsen, so clearly driving very well so far in this race and coming out of four, he has one more lap to complete and he'll be on the two-stop strategy, well and truly that is. That's one thing to aim for it and another thing entirely to actually make it work. Junt still out in third, Yannick not too far behind him in fourth, already pitted, so I still believe Yannick is in a very decent position indeed in this race. Ooh, as there's a lapping going on up ahead of him and that has Yannick slowed down a little bit. As that is, I believe... Lavac and no, that's uh, that's Juha Bosa's car. So Bosa and Equino with a bit of an uh, impromptu uh, uh, breakdown of communications, I should say. It's that's a red car. Would that be that was not Anders Nilsson? Slapinski just getting past Lavac, so already up into back in, up into seventh. Equino being held up once again behind the lap car. This this well actually he's trying to unlap himself from David Junt, so that's how slow David Junt is on old tires compared to Equino on far newer tires. Wow. That's incredible to see. And here, as here goes Brian Yannick up past David Junt as well. So clearly showing the tire difference. Quino really letting it hang out right there. As David Yakes has actually called for the pit lane. Anders has done as well, so Anders into the pits. <gasps> oh no, he makes contact with a parked car. Oh dear me, that'll slow him down quite a bit. That's very unfortunate. Locked up tyres heading into his pit stalls. He actually has to reverse. We actually missed its pit stall altogether. Oh dearie me, that's a 
big mistake for Anders there. We'll see how much that loses him. He may even be down to Schlapinski. Uh, maybe not quite that far behind, but that loses him quite a bit of time. Looks like he will come back out in fourth. It's only around 10 seconds ahead of uh, Ibanez, father and son. So that's not good for him. As Jund and I'd assume David Yakes heading to pit lane this time around. But well and truly set for a two stop, so that's a positive for them, so that could still work out in their favour. David Yakes clearly far more versed in getting into pit lane as Jund still continues for another lap. So Brian Janik retakes the lead. And let's see where this puts Yakes compared to Nilsson. This is where we truly see how much time Nilsson lost. There was a about 12 second difference between the two of them as Nilsson headed for the pit lane and make that about a nine second difference now so that's uh, more or less a 25 23 to 25 seconds lost for Anders Nilsson in that situation so that's very unfortunate but uh, We'll see what happens later on in the race. As Jund's still going around, I wonder if he's trying for a one-stop. That would seem quite courageous, but uh, you never know. As Nilsson promptly goes up the inside of Santos, put him another lap be behind himself. Oh, as that's someone with... having Oh no, that's Bruno Chacon! Deary me, he was having such a good race as well. So that looks like quite the off for him. So he is headed for the pit lane for repairs. Looks like he will have lost it coming off of four, maybe, considering those tyre marks. It's very unfortunate, but uh, that means Drexler is up into 14th, he'll be happy with that. Jason White up into 13th once again, Sabre 12th after his pit stop, Jarebin 11th, Rudol 10th, Jon team actually 9th, so inside the top 10 for Jon. I reckon he'll be happy with that. And Lauch in 8th. Schlapinski 7th and about 8 seconds behind Father and Stan st still going at this as Alberto Quino heads up the inside of Ibanez, and that's a position gained and fifth taken for Roberto Junior. Very nicely done there. As Jun now heads into pit lane. So Yakes and Nilsson going past. Looks like he'll lose out to Equino and Ibanez as well. Will he stay ahead of Slapinski though, who had a very slow in lap? I don't think so, because here comes Slapinski on the racing line with worn tyres, and there he goes around outside. So David Junt rejoins in seventh position. A very long run into the race, but should be a very quick stop towards the end for the Swiss driver. And look at that. Three seconds gained already for Anders compared to Jake. So Nilsson really going well around here as well. We can see that. Let's see we can get the timing up because Nilsson was about a second, second two seconds behind Yannick when Yannick pitted. Nilsson is now 25 seconds behind Yannick. So yeah, 23 seconds he lost to uh, with that 
hiccup in the pits. And team in 8th, Riddle 9th, Sabre 10th, Yereb in 11th, so that means Lavac has just pitted, coming out in 12th. Just ahead of Jason White. So Chacon back out and running again. Currently in 18th. One lap down to the car in front, which is Juha Bors. Ooh, as Santos has a big loose moment coming off of four, but was able to hold on to it. This is another of those things with this track. There's so much traffic that you really need to know how to work them to not lose time. Because Ann Nilsson has just lost about a second, second and a half sitting behind Saber and Yereb, who were in a battle of their own. Looks like Equino is actually pulling away from Alberto Senior, so Alberto Junior really flying in the last few events he has partaken in as the Velos Panelli Jones racing team wants Alberto Senior to head into the pit lane. I don't think that's a truthful call from them. I would assume that's a a try to get the others other teams a little bit rattled. West team and Ridol back fighting once again. Mirabidol and Nat McLaren trying to sneak up the inside. Looked like there were a tiny bit of contact, but Mirabidol goes up the inside and up into 8th position. And Raul Yereb just outside the top 10 at the moment. No, I, I'm fairly sure he would like to be inside the top 10, but uh, it's only about a second up the road, so anything can still happen. Ooh, a Sabre gets loose there. Is Sabre heading into the pit lane, I wonder? No, he just got loose, so Yereb with an opportunity trying to go around outside here. Quite able to make that one work. Saber now in further traffic, so could still be in a slight opportunity for Yereb here. But likewise, an opportunity for Saber to open up a bit of a gap unless. Raul is able to lap Drexler right away. He isn't, so... Well, more or less isn't. Drexler very nicely pulls out of the way there. Letting Yereb go past. Ravac currently in 12th with White 13th. Bouchard in 14th with Nelson sneaking up this inside there. Drexler 15th. Letting Yannick fly past. Uh, Santos currently in 16th, Bors in 17th, looks like he is getting ready for a pit stop. Uh, and Chacon still in 18th. And Bors indeed heading into the pit lane. And Alberto Quino into the pits as well, that seems a little bit early, but... Maybe he decided to have a short stint now and try to stretch it towards t to the end of the race from here. I wouldn't put it past him as he's already coming out of the pits, currently 7th. And I think he will be able to hold on to that position if only just from Ray Ridol.
So it looks like Yannick is more or less running to a pace at the moment, keeping the distance to Yates fairly consistent. And uh, and it's the same. He'd lost a bit of time to Yakes a few laps ago and have yet to be able to gain it back. So that I think that time loss will certainly. Nilsson would cert certainly rue that bit of time loss, but uh, still over a hundred laps to go, so again, we'll have to see what happens towards the end of the race. It looks like Alberto Ibanez has also pitted as he's down to sixth now. So, a slightly longer pit stop for Little Anne, I wonder why. Will he take on more fuel, maybe? Or did he have to repair some damage? Possibly. Only a difference of four seconds in the pit stop, but that's still... That's still quite a difference. As it looks like Jon team has just had a pit stop. Drexler behind there. Those two fighting for position, Drexler and team. Looks like Drexler is running wide there, so Tim up the inside, I reckon, on the exit. And he does just that and sneaks up one more position in the field. Slapinski back up into fourth, but that's partly down to others pitting. And Nilsson now actually closed up a little bit on Yakes, but not that much. And Yannick still well out in front, and only the top three on the lead lap, which is incredible. I believe, okay, it's about a corner between Anders and Brian, so still a ways to go for Nilsson to go a lap down on Yannick. Schlapinski currently first car, a lap down in fourth. Junt in 5th with Alberto Senior in 6th, Alberto Junior in 7th, Riverdahl in 8th, David Sabre in 9th, and currently Raoul Reb in 10th. Unfortunately for us, most of the driver seems to be fairly spread out at this point in time. So actually, with that being the case, let's have a look at the trivia question for this evening. So we have something to ponder for the remaining 100 laps. So the question we have this evening, courtesy of Jason White, is which driver scored his first IndyCar win at the Wisconsin State Fair Park in 1965. Was it A, Mario Andretti? Was it B, Gordon Johncock? Or was it C, Gary Bettenhausen? I have to say that's a very good question, and uh, I had to I had to guess on that one when I first saw it and I incredibly got it right so it is possible to get it right you just have to need to have a little bit of luck if you are I'm guessing what the correct answer is
And that's very true, thank you. Uh, I think that's uh, Richard Wilkes, Sky Wilk, saying there that uh, the two tires change, and that's certainly very true. I didn't think about that at all, but uh, that certainly could be the case between uh, Alberto Senior and Junior for sure. But if that's the case, I'd expect Alberto Junior to reel him in rather quickly in the next 10 laps or so. so we'll have to wait and see, but uh, that, would that could certainly be the reason why there was such a difference. As we can see from Alberto Junior's car, he can see his senior up the road, so let's ride on board with him for a lap or two here while I keep a track, keep an eye on the uh, standings to see. It almost looks like Schlapinski is into the pits as he's dropping down the order. We should be able to see on the left hand side if that is the case as they come past the pit lane. Ooh, as Junior gets a little bit loose on the extra four there. I'm getting very low one and two. Actually lost a bit of time. And Slapinski now fifth. And he looks like Janik is heading into the pit lane. As is Schlapinski, so both of them heading into the pit lane now. So let's see where Yannick comes out compared to the his closest competitors. There goes David Yakes, Ray Riddle into the pits in behind, and Anders Nilsson coming past right there. Let's see, it's lap 109. Yannick will need to make a splash and dash to make it to the end, I believe. I don't think it can quite make 91 laps on one tank of fuel. That seems to be stretching it a bit too far. But then again, I suppose it could very well happen, but uh, certainly not what I'd expect him to be able to do. As you now fourth, OS Bouchard and Tim in a battle for position there. Tim almost hitting the rear end of Bouchard's car. Ooh, as Bouchard actually cuts Tim off there down the front straight. That looked a little bit dangerous. As David Yates, the leader of the race, wants to lap them as well. Ooh, and Bouchard all loose. Oh, dear me. That could have ended very badly. All the guys behind, very wily racers, and was able to shake up and wait to see what would happen to Bouchard. As Yeggs now goes up the inside. I noticed some what looked like new tire marks on the extra four, so... I was trying to try and keep a bit of an eye out to see if anyone's dropped further... And looks like Porfirio Santos has dropped a few more laps behind, so presumably maybe Santos lost it coming off of four. Obviously I'm only speculating, but since he's dropped further laps behind, I'd assume that could very well be the case. As Bouchard and Tim are still battling it out here for 12th and 13th. Tim trying to get a run down the straight, but can't quite make it happen. And now comes Anders Nilsson as well, wanting to lap them. Oh, and Bouchard really having to work that car to try and keep it in a straight line. Young team very sportingly lets his fellow Swede up the inside, as does Bouchard. So very nicely done, both of them letting him pass and being able to continue that scrap.
when there's Bouchard running wide, Tim wastes no time, goes up the inside and takes 12th away from the Canadian. Okay, Banyeth must have had an issue. Maybe he was the one who spun coming off a four. Of course, he's 15 seconds now behind behind Alberto Junior. So, wow. So Banyeth actually had a spun, must have had a spin then, or possibly a pit stop to make it to the end of the race. But I, I more hazard to guess that it's the spin that was his. this running deep deep into the stint once again let's see if they want to make it on one more stop they need to make it to lap uh, 267 makes it uh, 133 I believe they need to make it to so another 25 odd laps Make that 15 odd laps they need to complete to be able to make it on one more stop. So this is definitely a strategy race. The question is, will it be the hair and the former Brian Yannick or the tor 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 tortoises? Oof, that's that's a difficult word to say. Of Nielsen and Yakes that will take the win here this in, this evening. with a lot of traffic in front of him so this could very well lose him quite a bit of time oh no Jules Bouchard loses it oh dear me dear me dear me wow we oh no 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 he overheated tires ay 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 that's unfortunate hopefully he'll be able to continue from there as David Sabre has just been into the pits. I see Jules Bouchard trying to wait for a gap in the traffic, I think, to get going once again. Which is very difficult considering the amount of cars that is going around this track. Ooh, nicely done and down to the a down below the apron. Very nicely done there, Jules. Very sporting indeed and incredibly no yellow from that. Considering how long he was stationary, ooh, that looks like some suspension damage, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, Jules Fouchard's team will be able to repair that car to working condition once again. But uh, look, actually looked like uh, that was Bruno Chacon, wasn't it, to actually pushed Fouchard the right way again. But very nicely done from everyone to be able to avoid... Bouchard spinning car and for everyone to survive that possibly with the exception of uh, Jules we don't know for sure yet how his car is going to handle after the repairs but we'll see in a few laps time as uh, Yereb and Lavac is still is still at it once again and well for 8th and ninth at the moment with Ray Riddle actually also in there Trying to find his way past as well. Un Ridol a little bit deep there. Yereb trying to sneak up the inside. Not quite able to do it, so. And we obviously saw Ray started fourth in this race. He has some good pace in that McLaren. Just unfortunate that he has had a little bit of trouble. Urs Lavac actually slams the outside barrier, so. I don't think that will have done his geometry on the car any good at all. That must have been dirty air causing that as he goes past Santos. 
And that goes away as well up the inside of the Volstead. One lava is running a little bit wide. Ray almost getting up the inside. That's Nielsen just in front of them, and this will actually be interesting in the la in the next couple of laps because I don't think we have any 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 others that are really close on track. So let's follow these two and see. Since I sh I think they both have relatively new tyres compared to Nielsen, let's see what the difference is. As Ray goes up the inside of Lavac, Lavac seeing Ray show his nose and. Very understandably, so I'd say, lets the faster car past. But a bit unfortunate for us since that's probably that battle over. It looks like David Yates has slightly opened up the gap once again to Nilsson, possibly due to traffic. Actually, great to see Jus Bouchard back out and running. And it looks like his car is pointing more or less in the direction he would like it to point. So, looks like his team was able to repair the car to working order, and that's very, very nice to see indeed. So it looks like old tyres makes about half a second difference a lap. As Brian Yannick just did a 21.3, while I think both Yakes and Nilsson was in 21.7 and 21.8s. Better unit trying to put the lap on Schlapinski. Oh, Schlapinski actually pinches down a little bit there, trying to get past the car in front of him. And this very easily could have been a battle on track for position between Schlapinski and Equino, but Schlapinski obviously with a with some kind of issue on his first pit stop on the in lap, and clearly that has cost him quite a bit of time overall. See, we are about we're just a few laps away from possibly seeing. Oh, actually, David Yakes already pitting. So, right on cue for 67 laps to go. We know he went a little bit longer in his first stint, so I think this will be the last stop for Yakes in this race. 25 seconds behind Yannick, so it all depends on how close he can stay to to Yannick and how long Yannick's final pit stop ends up being. So I'd assume Nilsson to be pitting in the next 
three or four laps as well, especially as he has Ray Ridol for company. Rayon's newer tyres clearly going faster. But Nilsson yet to pit, and we can see that he is losing time hand over fist to Brian Yannick, who's now only about seven seconds behind him. I wonder if Nilsson is running, f trying to run as far into this stint as he can to have a quicker pit stop and or be able to run higher boost. Obviously while stockpiling he could turn the boost up a tiny bit and gain a little bit of lap time each and every lap. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here because there's 60 laps to go in 3 laps time for him. Meanwhile, Yakes is pulling away from him. On track at least. If only by a little bit of lap, but that's still... He's still going faster. And Alberto Ibanez, I'd assume, with the final pit stop for him, as he has dropped to 8th now. Behind Ray Ridol. So everyone now, but it looks like things trying to get their final pit stops in, to be in a good position in case there's a yellow towards... Ooh, the end, that's, that was someone getting loose. As Anders Nilsson into the pit stop, was Jules Bouchard getting a little bit loose. Uh, up ahead on track there, as Anders Nilsson now into the pit, so let's actually jump up to him and see where he comes out. Looks like it's a four tire stop, and there he goes out of his pit stall. A lot of rubber to lay down, and here comes David Junt. I don't think Junt has pitted for his final time yet. And here is Yakes, so Anders actually gaining time on Yakes on this pit stop. Oh, maybe just. Ooh! Warmer tyres for Yakes, up to speed as well. So Yakes up into second. Actually, third, because Junt is up ahead of them. I think he just missed the timing slot again. That transponder issue is definitely causing issues, but that's David Junt in second. Actually, Jan on board with him and look behind him. You can see two angry and presumably faster cars behind him on newer tires. So let's see what Yun can do about this. And look at that really aggressive line from David trying to get to run off the final corner. And look at that speed difference. Wow! And here he goes up the inside. Clearly and easily up the inside. So let's see if Nilsson will be able to do the same. Because he needs to speed it up if he wants to keep up with the aches at the moment. Nilsson obviously not a championship contender, but certainly wanting to have his, as good a end to the championship as he can. As he's found these very enjoyable cars and events to drive in, so very happy to have him here. And clearly showing that he can, st he can turn his hand to m many things indeed. Let's see, 26, 27 seconds the difference between Yannick and the car's drivers behind him. A 
as he sweeps around outside, but it looks like he will be getting boxed in here between behind Baniet and Bouchard. As Tim and Jason White, I believe, in a battle actually. 13 and 12. Actually, team a lap behind White at the moment. But team clearly on newer tyres, sweeping past Jason White. So I reckon Jason will need to pit soon if he wants to keep up with the Swede. In the battle for 12th, 13th, 14th position. Yates now goes up the inside of Jon team and And is trying to follow him through. Not quite able to make work there. Shlopinski fifth at the moment with Alberto Quino in for his final stop. 54 laps from the end of the race for him. Looks like he'll be easily hold on from Alberto Senior. So Senior clearly with some kind of issue earlier in the race, presumably those time marks and the spin onto the front straight. Ray Nathan looks like he's heading into the pits for his final stop. Sabre in ninth, I believe he's had his final stop as as has Lavac and Yereb. Jason White now in for his final stops. So let's see how he goes against Jon Team. I believe the pit transition was about 32 33 seconds, so he should end up coming out behind Jon Team, but let's see. Let's see here he comes out of the pit lane. I believe the white and red car behind there was Jon Team. You see that's Nilsson, I believe. Ooh, the next car will be Jon Team. And there we have Jon Team looking to try and take the move, take the position early on warmer tyres. Not quite able to do it though, I don't think. Might get a good run off the final corner though. Just about. Oh, Jason White running deep though. Here goes Jon up the inside. Oh, this is very tight indeed. A nice scrap here on lap 145 for these guys. Looks like Jason will hold on to P12 for the time being and a final point as well. So this is certainly a, an important fight, especially for these two. Let's just quickly head up the field to see. Still about 26, 27 seconds be between Yannick and Yates and Nilsson. Let's head back to that fight for the final point paying position for the time being. Ooh, as Jason misses the entry to one. Trying to run the wide, wide line though. And Look like he is just about able to hold on. That was a very close call. This Bidol now into the pit lane. As White and Tim goes round Porfirio Santos. And I believe that is Brian Yannick in behind them. It is indeed. So the leader of the race looking to put them what I believe is the third lap down. 
Oh, it's, oh no, that's a spin. Is that uh, Bouchard, possibly, that red car? Uh, it is indeed, so unfortunately Bouchard has had another spin as Schlapinski is into the pits. It looks like Bouchard has hit the outside wall once again. But so far, keeping it nice and easy here, trying to get the car back into pit lane. Very nicely done. Nice save driving there. Oh no, Mikael Drexler! So Mikael Drexler is out of the race. With what looked like a missing front right wheel. So two drivers out in the space of... Well, out. Two drivers with crashes in the space of just a couple of corners. Well, that's very unfortunate for Michael. He was having a very good race. I think he was sitting in 14th at the time of his retirement. So very unfortunate, but just one of those things as uh, Juha Bors coming out of the pit lane actually gets held up a little bit behind Jason White's car. As I believe that's that's Brian Yannick heading into the pits for his final stop, so let's actually follow this. How will this go for him? And where do we have Yakes and Nilsson, who I believe was running nose to tail when we saw them coming off turn four just a little mo just a few moments ago. Here they come, Yakes and Nilsson, both of them flying past. So Yakes up into the lead, Yannick down to third. And he'll be approximately 7-8 seconds behind them. Let's see, he has 40 laps, 41 laps to try and make that time back up. Let's see if the demon hailing from Detroit will be able to put that kind of lap times in to gain that time back. And it's also a question of will Nilsson and Yakes hold each other up? Very interesting to follow. David Junt, the Swiss clock, keeps going around, round and round, and still well inside the points in fourth. You can always count on David to have good races whenever he shows up. Maybe not always the ultimate pace, but very much good enough pace to make it in well inside the points if he's given a capable car. With Alberto Junior still running in fifth position, very nicely done. Very nice to see him have another good race. Oh no! No, 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 no! That's Jason White, I think! Oh, it is! Oh! Dear me! Gets it down to the bottom of the track. I wonder if that may have been a blown engine causing him to spin. At least it's out. And Jus Bouchard looks like he's had a blown engine as well in the pits. Uh, he has indeed, and he is unfortunately out. So two retirements there, both Bouchard and White. In the space of just a couple of corners. Or a couple of corners, couple, a few seconds. So unfortunately, Jason White with a retirement after a very good couple of events previous. So unfortunately, another retirement in this series for him. That's very unfortunate, but Yakes still holding on to the lead as Brian Yannick blasts in the 28-0 in his hunt for these two. It looks like Anders Nilsson has dropped just a little bit away from David Yakes, possibly due to uh, how the lap is, lapping has befallen them so far in this race. As David Junt is into the pits. Let's see where he comes back out. Question User is, will he come out channel. in front of Alberto Equino? Well, oh, he has a bit of a slow getaway there. Must have a second stab at it. It looks like he will come out behind 
Alberto Equino, so Alberto Junior up in the fourth position. And he'll have about seven, eight seconds of a gap to David Junt. Yes, Jason White has joined us in the booth. Sorry to see you retire there, Jason. Ah, it's all right. I, uh, with that contact I had with uh, Michael uh, towards the end there, I, it basically meant I had to take an extra pit stop, and I probably wasn't going to score any points anyway at that point. Uh, I made the classic mistake of charging too hard as I came out because I wanted to make up for lost time, and back and got away from me in the back stretch. So, but uh, God, really. Really hard work out there, I gotta say. Very hard work. It, was, it certainly has seemed that way. Many many drivers getting loose coming off of four, especially. And obviously, a lot of cars to try and make your way either have a keep an, an eye on your mirror, so trying to get around if, depending on what kind of pace you're at. Yeah, it's. Uh... And the other part of it is it's just mentally and physically draining because we haven't had a break. Uh, yet, uh, there have been enough. There have been some people who've spun, but it hasn't been enough to trigger a yellow. So, uh, it's this has been an absolute, absolutely grueling contest. And I guess for me, my my luck just run out, ran out <laughs> on, on that one uh, incident. With uh, he was like directly in front of me, Michael, and there was nowhere to go. I tried to move to the inside, but his car was still a moving target. So, oh, that's very that's unfortunate. Good. That's right. Um, so I'm looking at the board here. I'll stay with you for the end of the race, if that's all right. Certainly. Oh, someone has spun on the front stretch. Uh-oh. Oh, that's Yuha Who's Bulls. That? Oh, no. That's too bad because Yuha was in striking distance of points. Now, is he going to be able to get going without triggering a yellow here? Uh, I think so. As long as it doesn't blow the end, then it should be okay. Yeah, there he goes. He's Yeah, but he's going to have to... Ooh. He's going to have a difficult time getting back to the pits. Oh, and here comes the fast cars. Yeah, I mean... Oof. Losing a front wing and bring it back to the pits is one thing. Losing the rear wing is a totally different situation. The back just, you have a hard time getting the power down to begin with. Indeed, especially. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, just, uh, so it's going to be critical to see if he can get it back to, uh, back to the pits without uh, having a second spin. He seems to be holding on to it okay so far. Certainly, and it's also a case of if you lose... It's also oh, oh no no no! There he goes again! Shoot shoot! Ooh. Be careful! And he's right in the racing line! Oh man! Ooh. Brian just misses him. That, that, that I was, think that, that's the third spinning car Brian has had to avoid in this race. Now he's going to have a lot to talk about afterwards. Then, good grief! For sure. And it, uh, I was going to say, if he had lost his front wing as well, it it would it wouldn't be that bad to try and hold on to, but. No, no. If you lose the front wing, it's it's not too bad to get back to the pits. But but if you lose the back wing, it's just like it, 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 you're just at the mercy of uh, can you uh, keep the car balanced? You know, as you come around. But it looks like he's going to make it now. Indeed, and it looks like Yakes has actually opened up even more of a gap to Nilsson at the front of the field. So it looks like Yakes might extend his championship lead. By well, it, it, the, the key. The, oh, we got another spin. It's oh no, it's my teamy. Oh, it's no. Alfredo, and he's out of the he's out of the race. No, oh, that's really unfortunate. Oh, dear me, man. I'm sorry to see that both are cars out of the race now. Presumably, <sighs> that may have been very similar to yours, where he was pushing on a bit too hard and maybe just maybe lost it on maybe, the Maybe I don't know. There, that's a possibility. I don't know. But that's just, that's too bad. Man. Very much so. I suppose, as a positive, despite having had a crash earlier on, that should elevate Bruno Chacon up into the points. It should, yeah. Because I believe he, there's, uh, there's 37 laps left, so it should be enough. Ooh, as Chacon has a bit of a loose moment there, coming off of two. Uh, yeah, Bruno... Uh, to get up there. Bruno had an incident earlier in the race uh, right behind me, and uh, he's been struggling several laps down. So uh, it's uh, another testament to his uh, ability to persevere uh, if he manages to score the 20 points for the last spot. He's got uh, the leaders coming up to him now. He's going to get out of the way for uh, Jake's. But yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is going to be great for, uh, for David because uh, he's... Uh, 
you know, Shilipinski is in sixth, so he has a chance to really extend his championship lead here, uh, and time is definitely running out. Uh, we'll have to take a look at the points uh, that can be scored uh, remaining and see if... Uh, let me do some quick tabulations uh, while this is going on, okay? Certainly. And yeah. talking about persevering, another driver who I believe it's his first oval race. It, I'm, he may have done one of the 500 milers, but Jon Team currently in 11th for Eastern Racing Associates. And very much so, keeping, keeping the car on the track. I haven't seen him more than possibly uh, scratch the wall a little bit on exits couple of times but mm -hmm. being able to stay stay concentrate staying concentrated and on the ball as it were is certainly no mean feat and I suppose the same could be said for Raul Ireb who's missed a few rounds but back racing and inside the top 10 at the moment yeah it's uh, he, he had an incident early on too he slapped the wall and uh, he's probably driving with some damage on that car but he's uh, good for him to keep rolling Pick up a few points here in the end. Yeah, it looks like uh, Shotgun's going to be elevated eventually. Here. He's 12 laps off the pace, but eventually he will slot up into 13th. We have 10 or 20 laps to go now, so that'll pro he will eventually be elevated to 12th. Indeed, and it's very nice to see Peter Lavac back running again and inside the points in 9th. Mm -hmm. So another one putting in a very good effort. And Ray Ridol. Despite issues early on, he's been flying since then and up into eighth at the moment. Now he's looking good. He clearly showed he had pace, qualified fourth, but uh, unfortunately that incident on, I believe, lap 30 or 40, thereabouts, really put a spanner in, in his works, but certainly doing well. And David Saber as well. Seventh yeah, at the, it, moment. It, the, the challenge this race really has been how far do you go in a set of tires? Uh, some people gambled, including myself, that there would be a yellow at some point and pushed as, as hard as we could. And in retrospect, that probably wasn't the best strategy because uh, the yellows weren't coming out. So after that point, it was like, OK, at this point, the better thing to do is to just as soon as you see yourself losing time on the on the tires, the best thing to do is to come in. Uh, it, was, it, it, made, it was clear pretty early on that uh, <laughs> yellows weren't going to be triggered by simple spins. So, Indeed, and it looks like Brian Yannick has had some kind of issue because he's now 30 seconds behind Nilsson and Yakes. I think he got caught up behind uh, John Team there for a second, is what happened, and, and he lost some time. But, uh, well, 30 seconds is a bit much. It was five, four, five seconds behind. Well, maybe he had a spin before. that we missed. I don't possibly, know. possibly. That's very unfortunate either way because he was really flying. He was, I'd assume, on the same strategy that you were talking about, going, going like the hare. Um, yeah, it was uh, my the strategy I had was would it work out perfectly had had I not run into Michael Drexler later. Uh, I had a lap on a team and I was uh, pitting for my, it was my last stop and I was pitting for tires and uh, on the right side and just a little bit of fuel. And I came out right in front of him and then I uh, kicked the boost up to full and just put some space between him. And if I had been able to stay there, I would be 11th right now. So, which is bumming me out a bit. Oh, well. It's one of those <clears throat> things with racing ovals. Oh, yes. Uh, and you're, you were right about, I mean, this is a very wide track, but it, the racing groove is very particular <laughs> for these cars. <laughs> and it's, it, it's uh, surprising how narrow it can seem at times, even given what's going on. All right, so 185 is the lap that Jake's is working now. I'm going to have a look at uh, the points that are uh, scored for a 200-mile race and just see what this does to to uh, Jake's in the championship, just for our own. That mean 3,050 3, or something points for David if he wins this race? I believe, let me, I, I'm gonna... Thereabouts, but uh, shouldn't, shouldn't sell the hide before he shoots the, shoots the bear because Anders Nilsson is closing in. Oh boy. If 
only by a little bit, two seconds now the gap, but uh, it was nearly three seconds a couple of laps ago, so still 13 laps to go, so anything can happen in those few laps. Yeah, it can. Okay, so Jake's with the 400 uh, points, he'll have 3,050 points. Because he's got 2,650 now. Uh, Schlepinski, if he finishes sixth, we'll get 160 points. Here comes the abacus. Uh, 60 plus 2,000. So he'll have, he'll have 21. 60. Well, nearly 900 points. 900 points. Now, here's the important thing. Uh, is that enough of a cushion that uh, the championship is decided? So the maximum points you can score in the remaining races, it's uh, with round... With the maximum points you can score, uh, there's two rounds, which are 11 and 12, and those are 150 milers, and the most you can score in each of those is 300 points, so that's 600 for those two. And then another uh, another uh, 150 miler at the end, so you got 150, 150, and 150. So that's 300 times 3 is 900 points. So, so that's basically... <laughs> If Slabinski needs to keep rolling here. If he even loses one spot, uh, to, where is over, where is he versus where is he versus Saber right now? Uh, because if he loses this spot, the championship is over. You see, he's uh, he's about half a lap ahead of uh, Saber. Saber crossing the start finish line. As Slabinski enters the back straight, so well. It, 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 so we got two battles we should keep an eye on here. Uh, Nilsson and Jake's obviously because he's closing and. Uh, uh, Schlepinski and Saber, because, uh, yeah, according to my uh, calculations here, with only 900 points left to play for, and that's assuming that Schlepinski wins every round and Jakes loses every round, or, or, or is out of every uh, race, it's uh, the mathematical possibility is, is, is very quickly uh, slipping away. Very slim. <laughs> yeah. Dearie me, wow. I didn't expect that coming into this event, but... Uh... Well, there there was a sh there was still a shot, but uh, you know, 650 points. You know that you know that there was still you know a chance that uh, you know with the points in here plus the points to play for, you know, 400 plus 900 is uh, 1300, I believe. Mm -hmm. So if Jake's uh, had all kinds of calamity, there was still the possibility that uh, Slipinski could close. But uh, this is exactly what he didn't need: a great performance from Jake's and a mediocre performance for himself. Gap is a one is one point two seconds now between uh, between Jake's and uh, yeah, it's, it's really one point three now. one yeah one point two so it's yeah but it seems to have leveled off a bit we'll see uh, we'll see if uh, I mean the question is does Nilsson have anything left in the engine can he uh, abuse the engine a bit turn the boost up and close in well, uh, but you can, it, it, it's certainly possible and I know Anders has. Uh, I believe it's nearly 10 laps new tires, so mm -hmm. we should have a little bit more to work with. I, I reckon it's all down to how the lappings occur for them as well. Mm -hmm. There goes Jake's around Bruno, who is now elevated to 12th. Chacon staying very wide indeed. Wants no, nothing to do with Nelson on the exit, I don't think. No, he, he knows what's going on. He doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to interfere with the result. Um, especially considering the implications. So, we'll see what happens here. To be quite perfectly honest, I'm much happier being in the booth here than being on the track. Because <laughs> that, it, it, I was just pouring sweat and it's just like... You know, especially after you've had an accident, it's like, well, there you go. Oh, goodness, uh, Yunt uh, just clouded the wall real quickly there, so. But he's uh, he's having a decent race in fifth. Wow, he's uh, actually sneaking up the inside of Yannick. Mm -hmm. So he 
I think oh yeah, Janet he's played. he's right behind Equino, so he's closed in seven seconds on Equino. Yeah, the gap is stabilized here with uh, with Jake, so I think uh, I think it's pretty clear that he's uh, he's going to be able to bring it home here. He just needs to do two more laps, well three actually, 198, 199, and then 200. So he's got three laps to go now. Yeah, the battle on track at the moment, it seems, would be for fourth and fifth between Equino and Junt in the meantime. Because mm -hmm. Junt is now right up beneath the rear wing of Equino. And I'm fairly sure Alberto Senior will be watching this with bated breath. Hoping for his son to pick up fourth. Was you now again clouds the wall? Yeah, he's he's uh his tire his front his right front tire is probably about spent. As uh, here comes uh, Jake's off of the fourth turn and he'll receive the white flag. One lap to go, and the gap is yeah it's steadily increasing. It's about one point six. So all he has to do is this one final lap and he's brought it home. Jake's uh. Jake's definitely, uh, all he has to do is drive consistently the rest of the championship, and he's got it in the bag. Uh, very dominating performance. Here he comes through three, and then in a four, he's already backed off a little bit. <laughs> Coming up Completely the understandable. There it is. Great job. So David Yates takes the win for Dick Simon Racing, and Nyon secures the championship for himself. Anders Nilsson with a splendid drive, despite the pit stop kerfuffle, which probably cost him the win here. Finishes second, very nicely done from him. Ryan Yannick brings the, his uh, Robert L. Fletcher machine home in third. Alberto Quino just holds on the front of David Jun to finish fourth. Oh, great, great result for little Al. Excellent. For, for sure, for sure. Jun fifth. Uh, Schlapinski looks like he has finished sixth, so he keeps the championship if only barely alive. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, he is basically going to need um, Jake's to uh, not not show up <laughs> at, at, at the at the last three races to have any shot. Unfortunately, well, but, you never uh, know. Anything can happen in the races themselves. David Saver finishes seventh. Ray Riddle eighth. Peter Lavac finishes ninth. Raul Yereb in his drive for American Kids Racers. Finishes 10th, Jon Team 11th, and Brun Chacon picks up the final point in the Riley Folinski Hopkins race team. Mm -hmm. uh, Porfirio Santos for Rolla Volstead Enterprises actually finishes 13th. Very nicely held on there from Porfirio. I, I got to give kudos to uh, uh, Porfirio as well because he, you know, clearly he's learning these cars and isn't quite up to speed on. on on you know the intricacies of them but he stayed well clear of everybody was very respectful throughout the race so very good gentleman drive from him certainly true as i while we talked about that goes through go through the retired drivers but uh, mm -hmm. david yakes with the win absolutely incredible that he was able to pull that off Yeah, well, it shows the mastery he has of, of these cars. He's, it's definitely uh, it's definitely uh, right in his wheelhouse, so to speak. Although he also does really good in Formula One 1991. So, you know, he's, he's, his versatility, I think, is, is showing here as well. Certainly so. As, uh, while we wait to see if... User uh, was moved to your here's channel. the winner right here, Jakes. Hello? Uh, hi, hey, David. David. Congratulations on that win, and Can, well, thank you very much. Surprising, uh, no cautions. That was uh, an endurance race. Yeah, um, it's like uh, that. nobody had any. Everybody's incidents were just barely under what what the game would consider uh, for a caution. But uh, we were doing some tabulations here, uh, David, and and you've basically all but wrapped up the championship. Uh, with the uh, win, you've uh, you've elevated the point standings to uh, 3,050, and Schlepinski with his 160 points is at 2,160. Uh, the and uh, the points to play for left 
are 900 maximum for the two uh, legs of the 300 miler and then the uh, 150 at the end. So you're, there is a 10 point uh, margin there. Well, let's not jinx it now. If if uh, the only scenario that sees uh, Schlepinski uh, catching you at this point is if you don't finish in every race and he wins every race, so it's it's uh, I, I think it's fair to say you can play it cool uh, for the last three rounds. Well, I was trying to play it cool this race, and the the strategies just seem to to pan out to what uh, the race needed by the fact that there were no yellows. My mm-hmm. Cautious strategy turned into the right one because it I was able to only two stop. Mm-hmm. Well, it, well, it seemed cautious and no mistakes because we saw Anders pulled away from you early on in the race there, but uh, he had a bit of an issue in the pit stop and that that probably cost him the win. Yeah, he definitely had the pace, and then I'm not quite sure. I think Brian didn't quite get enough fuel at his stop, otherwise he was uh, on a tear. With the extra pit stop, I think he made, and he was going hard on fresh tires. He had plenty of pace. Mm. It was uh, it was going to be real tight come to the finish, but uh, yeah, I, everything worked out. And here is our second general. place finisher, Anders Nilsson. Hey, hey, Anders! Congratulations on second, or should it be condolences? I'll leave it up. No, there. no. No, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I think myself lucky that I actually got second today after the first dip pit stop when I plowed into Planner's car. I thought my pit stop was at the bottom end because that oh, was in the warm up. Okay. So I got a bit surprised and uh, untake, do not repair, getting in reverse. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm lucky. I couldn't touch Jax in the end. Yeah, I, I did my best, but yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, we caught that uh, that pit stop kerfuffle uh, when oh, it happened. Oh no, you so, did. Yeah, unfortunately, we did. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, d- but since you, it looked like you made contact. Did you pick up any damage from that as well? So is that yeah, why front... you didn't quite have the pace in the towards the end of the yeah. race then? Yeah, the front suspension got a, got a, got nicked, and I had to. The more worn tires got, the more I had to put anti-roll on in the rear. At the end, I think I had maximum anti-roll in the rear, and the car was still under steering. Oof. So, yeah. Welcome to uh, racing at Milwaukee. Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, for me, it, it must be a lucky track for me. I won here once, and now I'm second, <laughs> even though I mess up. So, yeah, lucky track, I think. And well done to Jake's. Yeah. Tires are. Move to your here's oh. the uh, here's the third place guy, Brian. Hey, hey. Sorry for cutting you off there in your discussion with. Uh, I believe it was you. How was it? But uh, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on despite uh, a mistake towards the end, possibly still finishing User third. User was moved to your channel. Yeah, I tried a, a different strategy, low fuel the kind of the whole time because I felt like the tires were going to get fried anyway, and it almost worked. I think I was reeling them in at the end, but I realized I was like a lap or two short of fuel, so I had to run low boost the rest of the way. It really threw me off, and then I spun. <laughs> ah, okay. And we we pondered whether it was a spin or a pit stop. So. No, I like it was kind of like uh, when you're, you know, when you have full boost coming out of that last turn, you can get loose or you can lose it pretty easily. And when I had to go to low boost, I thought I bet I can take this full throttle coming out of here, and I was wrong. <laughs> so I thought the I thought the safest thing to do since I was still facing the wrong way. I'm like I think I can make it into the pit entrance without getting a DQ, and then I can turn around without getting anybody else's uh, race ruined. So I thought I just blazed through the pits. Ah, uh, fair enough. But yeah, it cert- it certainly looked like from the broadcast booth that, that you were closing in on both David and Anders towards the yeah. race there. So. I outsmarted myself. Outsmarted myself with the fuel in the last stop. I took some out, and then I had to let them lap me to make sure I'd finish. (laughs) Fair enough. Good run, Anders and Jake's. Shaky, Jakey. You has in here as well. Yeah, looked like a bit of a difficult race for you, Yuha, but 
Uh, I think you finished, so at least that's a positive. I, I finished. I set my fastest lap, two laps from the end. <laughs> and unfortunately, before that, I hit the wall twice. Uh, all by myself. So it cost me 10 laps. Um, probably just as many places. <clears throat> I finished. I did better next time. <laughs> well, that's certainly a uh, what I'd call a step in the right direction. Having finished, then next time you can always yeah. look to do better. I think the car, when it had four wheels and two wings on it, was quick enough to be in the top five. But mm -hmm. it doesn't help when you spend 10, 10 laps in the pits. Yeah. Um, just to give you guys a heads up on the point standing situation. Uh, all, all, all uh, Jake's has to do is like finish twelfth in one of the following races, and he's won the championship uh, due to the mathematical situation. Uh, it's in there's nine hundred points left to play for, and uh, uh, there's a eight hundred fifty point gap right now. Sorry. Or eight hundred. Wait, sorry, eight hundred ninety point. Yeah. So it's definitely a nice position to be in, but I'm yeah. not going to celebrate until it happens. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Very understandable. Uh, right, because AMS has a random lightning bolt feature too. Well, and and, and Jake's <laughs> Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's yeah, what that's it is. The other one. So. All right. And it's too bad we don't have Slipinski here. He could explain to. He could talk to us about his race, but it just. Just looks like his. I mean, he had the speed in qualifying, but it looks like he just didn't have the race pace. Uh, looks like yeah. had, I think he had a had an incident quite early on mm. in the race, and that's put him back a little bit. Uh, like a very slow uh, pit in lap before his first pit stop. I'm not sure what happened, but mm. it was visibly clear that he was going slower than many others did before him. So not sure exactly what happened then. Hmm. Uh, but uh, talking of the championship and what's coming next in the championship, we're heading back to Trenton for the uh, Trenton Times 300, a double header there. How? What are you guys looks on that going back to Trenton for second time this this year? I can answer first. I haven't been there yet, so for me it's going to be a new <laughs> experience. So. Not gonna. I have no prediction. <laughs> Last time there was a little bittersweet, but it's a great track that has good racing. So hopefully, uh, it'll be another exciting event. I cannot remember what happened to me in that race. I'm sure something did, but I remember loving the track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's going to be fun. It, it's a medium speed track, and that dog leg in the back makes things interesting. So, uh, and we've got two uh, two rounds there in one week, in one Sunday, two hundred fifty mile races. So it's going to be uh, the, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the second one. People will be really tired. So, oh, it's a it's a double header kind of. Yeah, it's a double. It's the only double header on the schedule. Uh, it's a, it's the Trenton Times 300, and it's two 150 milers back to back. And then we finish up the season at Phoenix again. Mm. Mm -hmm. Also a new track for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I suppose that's a positive. That's both a negative and a positive for you, Anders. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be okay. I'm in good hands here. <laughs> it certainly seems like it. Uh, You're so going to know every oval soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, certainly no 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 fault or bad thing in anything you you've been doing so far, Anders. So uh, thank you very much, all of you, for joining us in the booth for the post race chat. And maybe you'd like to have a have a hand in the uh, trivia question for this evening uh, about mid-race 99 laps in I asked which driver scored his first IndyCar win at Wisconsin State Fair Park in 1965 was it A. Mario Andretti B. 
Gordon Yoncock, or C, Gary Bettenhausen? Jason obviously don't gets to answer because he no. knows the answer. <laughs> it could be any of those, I have no idea. C. C. Uh, I'm going to go with A. Okay. You have any, any guesses? I'm going to go with B because no one else said that. <laughs> yeah, C or B. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say B. <sighs> C. Fair enough. Jason, do you want to do the honors? I'm going to take two out of three, Brian. The answer is is Jan Cock. So B oh, Gordy. 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 Ooh, what do I win? <laughs> Free weekend in Rome. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime supply of peel and stick tile. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, Cat finally yeah. happy with that, Jason. Uh-huh. <laughs> well so you have got it right. I think the only one to get it right, both in the booth and from what I can see on the broadcast uh, chat. So congratulations you on that. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, quick run through of what's coming up here at ISO before we round off the broadcast. We have, uh, I believe that is next weekend, it is indeed on the Sunday, we have the 1980 BMW M1 Pro Cars at the Österreichring. Uh, the 2020 Lukas Vidra Trophy, round 6 of that uh, drive, all-round drivers championship. Uh, qualifying will begin at 2000 CET and I will be in the booth. And we'll see whether I'm joined by anyone or if I'll solo it. It all depends on who is driving and who is not. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe we have a full grid for that one. Yeah, it's completely full. So that's very a very positive sign. That is, uh, what is it, 24, 26 cars, something like that, filled out. So definitely mm -hmm. looking forward to that. That's a very, very nice track. And some great cars, uh, courtesy of Richard Wilkes, improving the physics ever more and then the weekend after that on October the 18th uh, we have a Grand Premio Tio Pepe de España the Spanish Grand Prix in our 1991 Formula 1 championship around 14 of 16 in that uh, championship, I believe, is nearly sewn up there. I think it's still somewhat up to gr up for grabs, similar to how it is here in the USAC. It's a little, it's a little more up for grabs there, but not by much. Okay, so that is something for you all to look forward to. Jason White will be with you in the booth alongside Alberto Ibanez for that yep. one. So yes, that's up. promising to be a very good race. And then on November the 8th, that is two weeks, uh, make that actually three weeks after the Spanish Grand Prix, we have the Fuji Television Japanese Grand Prix, the 15th round of that championship. And finally, in the coming ups that we know, we have on November the 15th, Round 11 of t and 12 of the 13 rounds, Trenton Times 300, the two 100-mile races at Trenton. But, uh, yeah, and that's also promising to be very exciting indeed. Trenton is a tricky track, and these cars are quite a handful around that little Mickey Mouse uh, dogleg oval. I don't know if I'd call it Mickey Mouse. It's it's pretty quick. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, very quick. Depends how your car handles through that kink. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much to everyone who tuned in and to all our races and participants. And I hope you all have a great week and we'll see you all next weekend as the at the Österreich Ring for the BMW M1 Pro Cars. Good night everyone. Thank, thank you, Jonathan, for broadcasting. You're very much welcome. Good night.
need a shower, I think. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for the the broadcast, John.